There have been lots of requests for how to draw circular um, LED panels or circular arrays or LED panels um, using the LED panel tool or the um, LED screen tool in Vectorworks. Um, currently, um, the screen tool does not create um, circular arrays of panels, only flat ones. So there are, there are a few workflows, or there is this workflow that I think is probably the most accurate way of doing it. Um, first of all, I'm gonna draw a circle uh, with a diameter of 10 meters. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the start of the circle round to here. Now this, the reason for doing this is because I want to now segment this circle. And I'm gonna use the um, modify drafting aids arc into segments command here. And I'm going to um, segment this uh, at 500 millimeters segments, and I'm gonna draw a poly, and then the result is going to be a polygon. When I do that, the Vectorworks will create um, segments starting from this point here, moving all the way around. Before I chain, take away this circle, I'm going to mark its center point by doing that using a locus, and then I'm gonna remove it, move the circle. Okay, so now what I've got, if I zoom right in here, and maybe if I just make this a little bit uh, fatter there, you can see that this is segmented. But what I need is the, the segments to be um, symmetrical. So if I find that midpoint there, what I need to do is to try and move the midpoint up to the center point, which is here. So I'm gonna zoom out and I'm going to run the rotate tool. And I'm gonna select the um, center point here and I'm going to find the midpoint there and I'm gonna move that to there. And now that is perfectly symmetrical as far as the segments are concerned. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to split this up. So I'm gonna use the split tool and I'm gonna find an end point. I reckon that's about right for what I need. And I'm gonna run the tool and delete most of it. Okay, good. So let's create a panel. So I'm going to double click this and just to create one panel, one single panel. Um, and it's going to be 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. And I'm gonna press okay. Now I could put it here and that would be fine, but I'm actually gonna put it here. Now before I do, um, what I'm ultimately going to do is I'm going to array, I'm going to duplicate this around this um, polyline. But before I do that, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on it. So I'm gonna to go to this um, view here and I'm going to take what I, if, and if I go to a shaded view, you can see that this image is here. Now, if I was to change the vertical count to five, um, what will happen if I was to apply another image is that image will be spread out over these five panels um, in a vertical direction. But as we're going to move this around here, then I'm gonna have individual um, long panels that I'm gonna to have to map. So what I want to do is I want to create my own surface on which I'm going to map a single image. So I'm gonna drop that one down to one again. Now the reason, the other reason why I'm going to use one panel is that this is going to work a little bit better if, if I was going to use the inventory and equipment lists um, command. Um, it gives me a, a clear account of what I'm actually using. So that's one of the reasons, one of the other reasons why I'm using single panels as well. So I'm going to extract the surface here. Press enter. 
and then I'm going to group everything up. I'm going to select that and that. I'm going to group that. And then I'm going to run the move by points tool. And I'm going to make add four more like that. And then I'm going to group those up as well. So now if I was to go to a top plan view, or you could do it from that previous view and select that and that and run the um, duplicate on a long path um, command. I'm going to have, I'm going to turn off center object on path and I'm going to keep tangent to path um, enabled here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to have fixed distance of 500 millimeters. So each repetition is distanced over 500 millimeters. And if I press preview, you'll see that nothing happens. Now the reason why that is, is because, and you see well, that's the result. And the reason why that is, is that that um, is going the wrong way around. I need to change the direction of that. So I'm just going to reverse back and I'm going to change the direction of that. And then I'm going to select both of those again and run the duplicate along path command. And if I preview that now, you will see that we're going to get that result. That will be removed. And when I press OK, that's what I get. Now, what the command does is it actually adds an extra one because it's doing every 500 millimeters. And so logically, um, the, every 500 millimeters, we will add one on the end. So you just remove that. And that is a perfect array of panels um, around that, that um, polyline. OK, I'm going to go to a shaded view. And then I'm going to start doing some ungrouping. So I'm going to select, um, you can see the groups are here. I'm going to use the um, select similar tool and select all the groups and ungroup them. And then I'm going to select another one of these groups and I'm going to ungroup those as well. So now I've got everything is ungrouped. Before I do anything else though, I'm going to select one of these um, NURBS surfaces, if I can pick one up, there you go, and all of them are selected. And then I'm going to go Model, Add Solids, and all of those NURBS surfaces will be um, turned into one single surface or one solid addition. Now what you can see here is there's quite a lot of what we call Z fighting where the two surfaces are interacting with each other and the render engine doesn't really know what to render. So that's just what you get this sort of checkerboard um, mess um, which we can solve very quickly. Now you could solve it just by um, offsetting each panel by ever so slight a slight amount like a millimeter. But actually there's a better way of doing that. If I was to duplicate that texture, which is the Vectorworks texture, it's going to duplicate that, press OK. And then I'm going to, with the original one, I'm just going to edit it. And I'm just going to just make it transparent. So I'm going to go plain transparency, and I'm just going to press zero and press OK. So that's now completely transparent. So I'm going to go to a top plan view and I'm going to try and find my original polyline which is somewhere down here and if I press the J key and go all the way down to the bottom here you can see it and press OK. That has currently got a perimeter value of 6500 millimeters. If I was to draw a line across there You can see that that value is 6052. I'll just get that. Six oh five two. And now we need that value um, in a second. I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. 
Right, so if I go back to the original or to this copied uh, Vectorworks logo and edit it, I'm going to paste in this new size. I'll just paste it into the preview image as well and press OK. Good. So now, if I was to select my solid edition and render it using my new render texture, you can see that very little happens at the moment until I press plane. I also, it would also help if I press shaded like that. So I'll just go back to um, Surface UV and you can see um, that's what it's done. Okay, if I was to press plane, then you can see that if I was to go to a front view, you can see that that's mapped um, nicely like that. Okay, seems to be an extra panel down there somehow. I don't know how that's got there. However, um, there you go. And there is the um, image spread across like that. Now I can map that nicely using the attribute mapping um, tool, which is a little bit tricky, uh, but if I suspend the snapping, it's a little bit better. And now I've got a perfectly sized Vectorworks logo going across the front there. If you're a projection purist, you probably wouldn't want that uh, because um, the Vectorworks logo technically will be keystoning around that. And what you probably need is for the image to be, um, ar um, to be mapped around this curvature here. So what you could probably try is try a cylindrical mapping mode, uh, mapping uh, type. So I'm going to change that to cylinder. OK, um, not helpful at the moment. If I press the attribute mapping um, tool, you can see that that's the origin of the mapping at the moment. And I'm just going to move that to my locus just there. OK, I'm going to change the um, radius of this. Now I can do it from here. If I like, I can also do it. Um, I can also do it if I get if I come out of this tool. I can also do it um, from the uh, attributes palette. Um, sorry, from the object information palette. But I'll leave it like this um, for now, and then I'm just going to rotate that into position. Now, if you remember, I took a measurement of that perimeter. Um, so let me just go and change that now. Let's just change that to 6500 and press OK. Um, you can also see, um, well, let's just get this right first. Um, let's just rotate this back ever so slightly. There you go. You can also see that it is rather reversed out, which we'll fix in a second. I'm just going to lift that up ever so slightly. And then we'll just go back to here and I'm going to edit that once more and um, go back to the image and just flip it like that. OK. And there you have that is technically, I think, probably what most projection designers would, 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 would want to see. So I'm going to go to a front view now and there is a perfectly um, aligned image around a circular array of LED screens.